as we look here today at the ninth of Av coming up here and what it means. The ninth of Av is also called Tisha B'Av. And we're considering rapture possibilities, not predictions, food for thought, and interesting observations. August 12th and 13th is the 9th of Av, and uh, it is an interesting day to watch and consider, in part because uh, I, I believe that the uh, most important thing in God's heart about the timing of the rapture will be that it will be a day to impact the Jewish community that their hearts will consider Jesus Christ as Messiah on the day the rapture happens. And God, I believe there's a possibility that God will pick the day that will most impact their hearts. And one day that would be very meaningful would be the 9th of Av. This year, the 9th of Av is August 12th and 13th. No one knows for sure the day. This is food for thought. It's not a prediction. But on the 9th of Av, on the 9th of Av, which would be August 12th and 13th, the big, the big thing that started the 9th of Av is 10 of the spies in their tradition. That was the day the 10 spies brought a bad report to Moses about the land of Israel, and we refused to enter the land. This is from a Jewish website. As such, God forced that generation to wander 40 years and die in the wilderness. So the huge thing that started off the disasters of the 9th of Av was they refused to go into the promised land. And that was a very serious thing to the purpose and plan of God. So we see these, these things uh, unfolded in history on that day. In a certain way, we could look at it as God is in control of history, that God is showing them over and over how disappointed or how um, it was serious that they refused to go into the promised land. We see many things that happened big, big thing is about the destruction of the first temple in 586 B.C. Uh, that's huge. And then also the destruction of the second temple in A.D. 70. But beyond that, even in history after the time of Christ, the massacre of the entire Jewish population of York, England in 1190 due to the Christian blood libel, the banishment of all Jewish people from England in 1290 by King Edward, the final day for Jewish people to leave Spain after the expulsion order of 1492. And Columbus sailed the ocean blue. The beginning of the Nazis' deportation of Jewish people from Warsaw to Treblinka in 1942. So this is uh, about the 9th of Av, as we're looking at and considering August 12th and August 13th in 2020. 24 with everything else coming down in the world. So uh, um, now this, this is a video here on uh, what we lost when the temple was destroyed. And uh, I, Olive Beta, I'm not going to play that one. But just to emphasize, this is Chabad.org, an Orthodox Jewish website. Again, emphasizing that night. The ninth of Av, the people cry. They insist that they'd rather go back to Egypt than be slaughtered by the Canaanites. God is highly displeased by this public demonstration of distrust in his power, and consequently that generate, generation of Israelites never enters the Holy Land. So they failed to have faith to go into the Promised Land. Now what does this mean? In terms of the rapture, well, I would consider that Jesus Christ has offered spiritually 
abundant life. The promise of abundant life in Christ. And when anyone refuses to receive that life, to receive that blood, that God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And when there is no blood, and then judgment comes to that house. Judgment comes to that life. That is the only way to have spiritual life is through faith in Jesus Christ. So when a person refuses to receive Jesus Christ as their Messiah, as their Savior, then they are refusing to enter the spiritual promised land. So if the rapture happened on the 9th of Av, it would impact the Jewish people in a way, in God's way of saying, you refused to enter the spiritual promised land, now you're left behind in the tribulation. I think that would, uh, would uh, be a time of great shock. And uh, here is a video, what is Tisha B'Av, the Jewish day of mourning. And this is by Bim Bam. And this is a Jewish website. It is not a Christian website. But just to say, just hear a few words of this. Every major ancient holiday on the Jewish calendar, even Yom Kippur, is ultimately about joy, except for one, Tisha B'Av. On this day, the ninth of the Hebrew month of Av, it's said that a series of major tragedies to the Jewish people occurred, including the destruction of the first and second temples. It's a day of mourning for getting kicked out of the land of Israel, for the destruction of Jerusalem, and the medieval expulsions from various lands. It said that Tisha B'Av is the day when it all went down, literally. Sacred sites, entire communities, utterly destroyed, leaving a gaping hole in our collective soul. When life comes crashing down, we're left devastated. We cry, we mourn, we feel isolated. All natural responses to loss. Tisha B'Av is a day of mourning when the Jewish people acknowledge that no, life is not all butterflies and roses. And yes, this tribe has been through some serious suffering. The time prior to this day is known as the Three Weeks. The period starts with a fast on the 17th of Tammuz, when the siege of Jerusalem in 70 CE began, and intensifies during the last nine days, when the walls were breached until the 9th of Av, when the ancient temple fell. So it's about the loss of the ancient temple, and that is a huge thing that is emphasized on the 9th of Av, the destruction of the temple, the temple representing the place uh, that uh, where the, the Lord dwelt, where it is central to the worship because they would do the sacrifices at the temple. They could have Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, take the blood into the holy place. But we think of, in a spiritual sense today, the temple, the body of Christ, Jesus Christ, said, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. Jesus Christ was, in bodily form, the temple of God, because he was God in the flesh. And the body of Christ today, I mean, the Bible makes it very clear in 1 Corinthians 6, we're the temple of the Lord. But that temple on the ninth of Av was taken away from the Jewish people, it was a devastating loss. And when the body of Christ, that is the spiritual temple of God in the world today, because the Holy Spirit dwells in the hearts and lives of the believers, the true church, the true believers, when that temple is taken away from the Jewish people on the rapture, it will be a great day of mourning. Because today in the world, we see Satan has stirred the hearts of multitudes of people to hate the Jewish people, to hate Israel. <clears throat> the one friend, the closest friend that Israel has, the closest friend that the Jews have in the world today is the evangelical Bible-believing Christians who understand biblically that God has a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and it is about the land of Israel. So the Christians who believe the Bible and follow the Bible and rightly divide the word, they understand and love the Jewish people. 
and the Christians, the evangelical Christians, are the best friends that the Jewish people have in and the best friends that Israel has. And then the rapture, that will be taken away from the Jewish people. That support from the Christians that are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, that support by the Christians who are the temple of God in the world today, in a spiritual sense, will be taken away from them. And that will be a ongoing pattern for the ninth of Av, that the temple was taken away from them. The temple was destroyed. And in this sense, in the rapture, the temple won't be destroyed, but the temple will be taken away from the Jewish people because the Christians will be caught up to meet Jesus Christ, the Jewish Messiah, in the air and go to the place he has prepared. And God will not forget his covenant with the Jewish people. As a matter of fact, we see in Zechariah chapter 12, even as we think about the 9th of Av coming on August 12th, we also remember Zechariah 12. That's the prophecy of a time uh, that's going to be about the war of end times uh, against uh, Jerusalem. And it also speaks of a time when the Jews mourn. They mourn in my understanding of Zechariah 12 because they realize they pierced the Messiah. They realize at that point that Jesus Christ was the Messiah and that breaks their heart. Now that's my interpretation of Zechariah chapter 12. We also see in Zechariah that there's uh, great victories, but there's also great suffering. Zechariah 14 makes it clear just before Jesus Christ comes again the second time that there will be great suffering in the world. So again, to say the ninth of Av was a day they, God was highly displeased because they did not have faith to go into the promised land. And now they're there in the land. And we see this scripture right here is huge in Isaiah 66. This is Isaiah 66 and verse 7. It says, before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came upon her, she delivered a son. And one interpretation of this from a pre-trib rapture hope is that the birth represents the body of Christ being raptured to glory. The Bible speaks of the church as a holy nation in 1 Peter 2. So he says, before her pain came upon her, she delivered a son. So in this theory, the pain that's going to come upon Israel is going to be what's going to hit her just as the rapture happens. And there, that very well can be uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. It says, uh, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child. Again, we see this idea of the birth. There's going to be pain as a travail upon a woman with child. And the Bible says sudden destruction will come. That very well can be. And in theory, I do believe that it will be. The release of nuclear missiles that come simultaneous with the time of the rapture, and that is not a definite prediction. That is a possibility. It's food for thought. It's what I very, believe very well could be in terms of what we see happening in the world today. But this is uh, to take the Bible word for word. Isaiah 66 says, Before she was in labor, she gave birth. That is, before the pain of the labor came, she gave birth. And Israel is surrounded with enemies. And in this theory, the rapture happens and then the pain comes upon Israel. The pain comes. But along with the pain comes the birth. That is the church being in glory. But also is going to come the Messiah to come alongside Israel and not having the church there to support her anymore. But Jesus Christ, who is their Messiah, will come along and open their eyes to see his love for them. And they will fall in love with Yeshua, with Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe Jesus is getting excited to see the bride 
face to face soon. And I believe Jesus is getting excited to, for the time of Jacob's trouble, that even though it will be a time of suffering for the Jewish people, it will be a time when Jesus will be revealing himself. Yeshua will be revealing his, his truth and his love. That he poured out his blood to cleanse their sins and will be drawing them to believe. So pray. Pray for the world today. Uh, what's happening today in the world? Jews in the France are getting ready to leave to go to move to Israel. Jews in London getting ready to leave London to move to Israel. The Jews in New York are getting ready to leave New York to move to Israel because of the hatred that Satan is stirring up. But God has a plan. His plan is unfolding. It is going to unfold and nothing can stop this train from going down the track. Hallelujah. Here's a few uh, words from Jonathan Kahn about the ninth of all. Babylon sent into exile, thus the book of Lamentations. When did Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonians, destroy the temple of Jerusalem? The ninth of Av. This is the beginning. This is the event from which all the other events come. The first destruction, the first temple, and then the second temple on the exact same day. And two different armies, centuries apart. I mean, you got the Romans on one hand, and you have the Babylonians on the other, 600 years or so apart, and yet on the exact same day. Nobody planned it. Nobody planned it at all. But in each case, you have, you have the destruction. The people are now taken into captivity. They lose their homes. They lose their possessions. And they go into exile. And so, and, and so you have all this, the beginning, and this is the thing that keeps repeating and repeating on the same day. The exile to Babylon. You know, you have all these things that are then repeated in some form. I mean, but it all goes back when, they were, when the Jews are expelled from Spain and, and England and France. And all, it's all a replay of their expulsion from their own home. It's like they're leaving because God, they only have really one home. And God is saying, you're still not home. And it's ne no matter when they try, to make, they try to make home, it's never right yet. So we want to stand on the promises of the Lord. And that's uh, God had promised them the land in uh, Numbers chapter 13. And uh, they refused. On the ninth of Av, according to their tradition, that the ninth of Av was the day they refused to go into the promised land. And so it set the stage for all of these things happening and the, whole, and the temple being taken away from them. Stand on the promises. God made a promise, say we're thinking about the promised land. God made a promise of eternal life to all those who would believe in Jesus Christ. This is God's promise. You can stand on the promise of God. You can rest in the promise of God. Embrace the promise. Jesus shed blood to cleanse your sin and trust in that blood. Say, Jesus, I trust you. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ, the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, Standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. The Lord bless you all, Jesus Christ. Is coming soon and I believe we have hope that it could be August 12th and 13th only God knows for sure 
This is not a prediction. It's food for thought. And interesting observations, I think, October 2nd and 3rd and 4th uh, with the uh, Feast of Trumpets being the seventh year anniversary of the Feast of Trumpets is also very, very huge. And uh, my favorite day for the rapture is today, and it could be today. It could be today. Are you ready? Uh, are you excited? I think you ought to get ready. You ought to get excited because the day is coming soon, very soon. Check this website, he died for you.com. Number four, and letter U, and share that with others to share the gospel. It's a website put together just to share Jesus. He died for you.com. Number four, and letter U. Father, bless those who've heard our words here today that they will hear your truth, Lord, and be drawn close to you in Jesus' name. Amen.